As electric vehicles evolve to meet the needs of drivers, smart cities are evolving to find the right fit for EVs in their urban ecosystems. I'm curious to find out how mass responsibility is critical in the adoption of EVs. It's been a dream for a lot of people and for you for a very long time, right? Mm -hmm. There's been so many obstacles. So how have you seen EVs in particular evolve? During the last 10 years, have actually taken us to this fantastic level we have today, where we actually can do cars like this, right. pure battery electric. How practical is it? You know, I come from a big car culture yeah. place. People are very reticent about it. Even with all the new technology that you see, it's still such an ingrained part of our lives. What happens if you get <laughs> stuck and charging and all that? Uh, so can you talk about the practicality? EV cars are different. They are the future, of course. We just have to use this car like smartphones. Standby time is shorter. Charging. It's not a problem. You get used to it. It's a modern way of traveling. So how much can one person getting an EV car, like what difference does that uh, actually make? Let's say 80 million fossil cars were produced. They need to be refueled all the time, the next 20 years. So what change can I do? I can buy an EV next time. So if you do the same, and we all do, then it could actually start to change. Yes, you as a person can make a big difference. And all together, big number. Hans, you talked about how an EV can help reduce an individual carbon footprint mm -hmm. by quite a bit and uh, what a difference that can make. What about the difference an EV can make in industry as a whole and uh, particularly in the long-term goals of fighting climate change? When we produce an EV car, it has a bigger impact in CO2 to actually produce the car. The car has bigger CO2 footprint actually to make the car. Yeah. But the good thing is you don't have to fill it up with gas for the next 20 years. So we have to make sure that producing EVs and then using them in the best way for a long time. I really think EV cars is the future. It will be lower cost, higher quality, yeah. less maintenance. So it will be a big change for the industry. What we want to do in the future more and more, be very precise in the definition of what CO2 burden is connected to a car that the customer buys from us. At the same time, charging it with sustainable energy. Only then an electric car will make sense and really become so much better than any internal combustion engine car. Some people today think it's not reachable, but if you have a very high ambition, the only way of getting there is starting somewhere. It has to be step after step to reach that very, very ambitious goal in getting to a CO2 neutral mobility. We all know that transportation is one of the biggest contributors to global temperature rises. And in terms of planning new urban areas, sustainable transport is, is very, very important. And it kind of works in a, a hierarchy of walking, cycling, public transport. But I also think electric vehicles are part of that sustainable transport story. So how do you think that fits into what Polestar is doing in terms of your vision for electrification? I mean, obviously, Polestar is a pure EV car brand. We have sustainability and a kind of ethical sustainability at our core, not just necessarily about electrification, but also about sustainability in terms of the materials that we select and the consumption that we place upon the planet to build our cars. So, Anna, what is London doing to become a more sustainable city? Well, sustainability is very multifaceted, so there's lots of things um, in terms of city planning that can be done. In London, lots of people are really concerned about air pollution and noise pollution. You know, there's an ultra-low emission zone um, within central London, so really trying to sort of discourage people owning kind of diesel and petrol cars. And I suppose that's part of an overall shift to try and get more sustainable transport. You know, there's a lot of new sort of low traffic neighbourhoods and is a, reducing some of those pollutants by over a third in a short space of time, which is, is very dramatic. Cities of the future are taking shape in the minds of visionaries willing to dream of something better. How we continue to get there from here, well, that's up to us. Yeah.